We have three sons. Dominic, age five, Michael, age three, and Vincent, age two. I'm a partner at one of the largest law firms in Las Vegas. I typically work 40 to 60 hours per week. And I'm home full time with the kids. Ah! Are you going to help us now? Our discipline style is just basically wanting everybody just to get along. Michael, no. you go down the slide. Dominic, swing. No. When they throw tantrums, I will give in. I want to be a fun mom. I don't want to say no to my boys too much. So they'd rather be the kid's friend than parent. That's ludicrous. I'd like to dangle something in front of the children in exchange for them behaving and doing as we say. Dominic, Michael, you guys were good. Who wants something? You've got your priorities all upside down. Give me your hand, give me your hand. Hand, 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 hand. Hand. <laughs> We typically don't like to go out with the children. They just don't want to behave, and no matter what you do, you, you, you can't stop it. Ah, you want a cookie? Ah, cookie? If they're behaving badly, I will definitely bribe them. Everybody gets a cookie. Anything to get them to calm down. You're rewarding inappropriate behavior. What is it teaching these kids? <laughs> Dominic is my big baby. Ah. He's very sensitive with his emotions, so he needs to be babied. Here's your piece. Yes. Not good. How crazy is that? <laughs> Super nanny. We are at a breaking point with the children because they've taken control of our house. <laughs> what? Super, Super nanny, nanny, please, please come, come help us. us. Okay, mom and dad, we're gonna have to sort out discipline and get more control. I'll see you soon. Joe. Hi. Hi. Can I come in? I am very excited to meet Joe. However, I am extremely nervous. Hi. Who do we have here? Vincent. He's two. And this is Dominic. Hi, Dominic. Pleased to meet you. I'm Jojo. I'm five. You're five. Say hi. Pleased to meet you. Hi. Hi. So first steps first. I guess I better look, right? Yes. And learn. <laughs> On the taxi ride over, I saw that mum and dad baby Dominic quite a lot. So I'm very keen to see if Dominic can do any of those life skills on his own. Dominic, did you pick out your clothes today? Oh, no. No, who picked it out for you? Did mummy pick it out or daddy? My mummy. It was difficult for him to dress himself because he might not pick the right clothes. So I will help him out because I love babying my Dominic. Dominic is a really big boy for his age. So one thing we do have trouble with is clothes fitting his size, because one day, right. you know, the same clothes won't fit that, that they may have fit like a couple weeks ago. So I will I remain in control right. and pick his clothes for right. him. And does that make it very difficult for him to get himself dressed as well? In the pants, I think so, because, because we might not have the right fitting clothes. If mom knows that some clothes are too small, why is she keeping them in the wardrobe? Dominic's five years old. He's more than capable of dressing himself. <laughs> After lunch, Mum went to put Vincent down for a sleep. Hi, guys. Then I saw Dominic fly to the pantry to grab something to eat. But he'd only just eaten. He's sneaking food. And then he hid underneath the table to eat. I wonder what Mum has to say about all this sneaky behaviour when it comes to eating. Why are they sneaky with food? Well, Dominic, because I scold him about it. Do you scold him because of your your concerns yes. with food and the impact that it will make yes. on his health? And he will right. he will sneak them. Right. I will okay. give him some yes. because I like to control some of it. Yes. But then oftentimes I'll give him some and then I hear the chairs sliding towards the pantry. Right. Do you think Dominic eats because he's hungry? If Dominic's just eaten lunch, yet he's going to grab more food, then there's something else going on here. And I need to get to the bottom of this. Michael, why don't you go down the side? A little later, Mum took the boys out to the back to play, but she wasn't pleased with the game that they chose. Don't go down with the golf, golf clubs. Dominic, you cannot. Don't take the golf. Dominic! Put the golf club down. You can't go down the slide with the golf club. Do they never listen to you? Rarely. And if they don't listen to you and and they continue to misbehave, what, what is your form of discipline? Mine, I usually threaten them with a spanking. I'd never follow through with it because they're too old for a spanking. Why would you threaten a punishment 
if you actually are not going to follow through. At the end of the day, this mum's form of discipline is basically nothing. OK, stop fighting, you guys. Let's go eat lunch. All right. Dominic hit you with a golf club? Yeah. I'm sorry. What happened? Well, he said Dominic hit him with the golf club, and right. I said sorry to him. Why is Mum apologising? Don't you think it would just make sense if Mum had just got to the bottom of this issue and dealt with it properly? I'm just not seeing Sylvia's logic here. Hi, guys. Later on in the afternoon, Dad got home from work. Michael, Hi. Federico, Hi. nice to meet you. Hi. And he barely had time to say hello before Dominic started whining to try and get his attention. I just laid him on the floor and Mama hit me. OK, well, come over here. Let's talk to Mama about it. Maybe we'll get you something sweet to eat and make you feel better. I think he wants a hurt prize, Mama. A hurt prize? What's that? The hurt prize is basically some kind of sweet treat to make them happy, and I use hurt prizes all the time. Oh, 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 oh. Let's be honest, all he's doing is using food as a pacifier, and that's going to create a really unhealthy relationship for Dominic with food. Now that I had the whole family together, I was really curious to see how mum and dad handled the kids out in public, so I asked them to prepare for a short outing. OK. So juice. Confused right now because Sylvia's talking about the amount of snacks that these kids are eating and the health issues surrounding that, yet she's filled a backpack full of candy enough to feed an army. Yeah, I'd be lying if I didn't tell you I'll pull oh, that no. sweet here and there, but that's a that's a backpack. Yeah, no, I understood. We are both worried about taking the kids out in public, so we have a tendency to bribe them with sweets. Just bring that stuff just, just in it's case really there's out. an issue. Just yeah. in case there's an issue. These kids are just being fed candy to keep themselves at bay from their behaviour, because the parents won't step up and address that behaviour. It's ridiculous. Just a couple more snacks just to make sure. <laughs> Michael with Mom? He doesn't here. want to. You gotta, here, you gotta Michael, go with Mama, come okay? with me. Look, it's time for you to go with Mama, OK? Go. Yes, I said yes now. You have to, here. Within minutes of arriving at the strip, the kids started complaining, and on cue, there was Mum dishing out the candy. Listen, if I oh, give you, you a piece yeah. of candy, will you come with me? I promise to give you guys something really good if you come with me. Here. You've already had how many today? I, I think that's an understatement. Understatement. Quite frankly, I'm appalled. It's unhealthy and it's irresponsible, and these parents should be stepping up and actually dealing with the misbehaviour when it happens out in public and not bribing the kids. Come on, Dominic. Let's Come go. with me. Come on. No, your knee doesn't hurt. Every excuse in the book with him. Then all of a sudden, Dominic started to complain that his knee was hurting him. And before my own eyes, there was Michael and Sylvia arguing about whether Dominic should go into the stroller. No, don't put him in the stroller. He wants to go in the stroller. Because you feel embarrassed? No, because I can't carry him, honey, for a month, for two months. But you, but hold on a minute. What's the, dis what's the distress there? You want to put him in there oh, and you're going to hold him? him. There's nothing wrong him. with his knee, honey. There's he's really just, nothing uh, wrong with his knee. He's he just, fakes it sometimes when yes. you sit down here. It's a little embarrassing, but pushing a child that big, but the bottom line is it's better than having a fit or just not being able to go where you want to go. So you Lex think that Dominic should just walk? Yes. Legs hurting or not, just walk? Yes. But Mum went along with it anyway. At the end of the day, they're treating Dominic like a baby. It's absurd. So we got back home, and I was thinking to myself, we're going to observe this family. Oh, no. Michael and Sylvia, they've got other plans for the evening. Let's go. Are you guys ready? Where are you going? To the gym. Yeah, no. like, are you all going, or you got a nanny coming in? They have childcare, right. and they have, jump, they have jumpy houses and slides. It's 7 o'clock in the evening. These kids are 2, 3 and 5. And instead of them winding down, these kids now are being dragged off to the gym. I've seen enough. All right, well, listen, get your sneakers on, do what you need to do, and I will catch up with you both tomorrow morning then. Thank you. Thank you. Do the Federicos have any interest 
in getting their parental skills up to scratch. I don't know, to be honest. I'm going to have some serious words with them tomorrow. We're getting ready for our sit down with Joe, and I'm a little bit nervous. I'm expecting for her to really let us have it. So what time did we uh, get back from the gym last night? Approximately uh, 8.45, 8 9 o'clock. So what time did the kids get to bed then? Last night, it was about 9.45. That, to me, is ludicrous. That children would even go to bed that late, knowing they're not going to get their hours sleeping and what's necessary for school and their development. You guys have created for yourselves a lifestyle that doesn't really benefit the kids in fundamentally what's necessary for them. Let's talk about yourself, Michael, and your work because obviously you work long hours, correct? Correct. So the time that you do have when you're with your family, you want to be meaningful. But if you make choices to then go off to the gym and actually not spend that time with the kids when there is a small window, how does that allow you to develop a relationship with each one of the boys? Obviously it doesn't. Let's talk about behavior out in public because watching the children's behavior yesterday, they actually don't listen to you and respect what you're asking them to do. Yes. What happens is, is that that behavior gets pacified with food. I mean, I almost feel like I'm watching Shamu at some sea world. I mean, the kids are bribed. Exactly the way it is. You're setting your kids up for absolute disaster. But we don't want that. And these kids should be listening and doing as they're told. There are times when they're going to have to do that very quickly because of safety. How do they get a sense of, of morally behaving a certain way because it's the right thing to do? Not because you're going to get payback. I, I just don't know what your logic is. It's a matter of just thinking that they're going to be happy that way and not be mad at us for scolding them or for trying to discipline them. So. No, I don't think none of you want to enforce that on the children. That's not true. It is true. true. We want to. I don't think you want to because I don't see any discipline at all for the behavior that gets out of control. The kids behave the way they do and there is never once consequence for that. They're not learning the difference between right and wrong. I saw on a few occasions your kids sneaking food no. out of the pantry. Only a few. <sighs> What needs to be really established here is healthy eating patterns and choices. Otherwise, they're going to be grazing all day. The fact that they just go in and take what they want and sneak the food away, it's an unhealthy relationship with food because they were being bribed with it. Admittedly, yes. Let's take a look at the kid's development because I look at Dominic and I feel that everything's done for him. Mm. Everything's pandered oh, for yes. him. He's not been given any little responsibilities. He needs to, to grow and to do things and become more self-sufficient rather than the babyish behavior that we see from him and the temper tantrums that he has that one would expect from a two and a half, three-year-old. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, how does he grow up to become capable of doing the things that are necessary for him to thrive? Okay, so are we ready to start some work? Yes. yes. We want to do what's best for the boys, and we'll do whatever it takes. The Fredericos clearly don't want to discipline their kids. They'd rather use food as a leverage to make them behave better. Well, I tell you now, it stops. They need to learn discipline, and they need to learn it properly. OK, we're going to use the naughty corner. I'm going to show you how to do it properly. Sounds good. I took mum and dad through the steps. When the time has been done, you go back for a second time and you explain why they were put in timeout. You then go for the apologies. Hugs and kisses. And we walk on. But mum noticed something at the corner of her eye. Thank you. And I've lost that. your attention, no, so. No, because I think he did a swing, so I think Michael did a push towards me. He did, so then that's no what you contact. So then yes. give him a warning for that. Michael, remember we said no hitting and no pushing, OK? <laughs> It, uh, Vincent didn't hit you. Eye contact, always. Look at me. If you don't look at me, I'm going to put you in the corner and you're going to stay there until you're three. 
<laughs> Give him a proper warning, because that wasn't a proper warning, what you gave him. OK. OK, you want eye contact, you're coming down to his level, and you're using the firm voice that I know you already have there. OK. All right? <laughs> Stop. Michael. Michael, look Stop. at... Stop. What? Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to do Stop when it. he's struggling. I don't like to raise my voice or sound mean or anything. I want you in a very firm voice. Okay, say to him, Michael, I want you to come here right now, otherwise you are going straight into timeout. I am giving you a warning. Come here right you now. You need to come here right now. You need to listen to me. Otherwise, I'm putting you in timeout. Otherwise, you are going into that corner. So, you have a choice. He either do it, he doesn't. Michael refused to listen, so he went straight into timeout. The rules are you have to listen to Mama. Yes, but now you are in timeout and you're going to stay in the corner. Yes, you are. Move away. Set the timer. And when he moves out the corner, you're going to put him back. Set the timer. OK. Don't talk to him. Take him by his hand and bring him straight back. Take him by his hand and bring him straight back. You're sorry? OK, good. That's good. I'm glad you're sorry. I'm very happy that you're sorry. No, I'm good. He's saying sorry, but you're going to stay in the corner. Or no? I'm not happy that he's sorry. What are you doing? Well, putting him back in the corner. What did I say to you? Not to speak to him. Don't speak to him at all. Sylvia just wasn't getting it. I said don't talk to him, and then she goes ahead and she talks to him. I mean, no parent likes to discipline, but you have to do what's right. When you've put them in the corner, and they realise that you're being very serious, the first thing they're going to do is go, sorry, sorry, sorry. They should have listened in the first place. He knew. He just wanted to be defiant and not listen to you. One warning and him not listening is good okay. enough. <laughs> Mum could hardly bring herself to discipline her son. I think she thinks if she disciplines her son, he's not going to love her anymore. When you go back, you're going to explain for the second time why he's in there. You were in the corner because you didn't listen. Say sorry. I love you. Come out the corner. We'll stand down. I was happy that the timeout was over because this, to me, was torture. Instead of mum and dad teaching Dominic to be more independent, they've been pandering to him. And it just is not teaching him the life skills that are necessary for him to learn. So I'm going to bring in an achievement board, which really should encourage him. Wow! This is for you, Dominic. This is to keep track of all the things that you can do by yourself. So I sat down with mum and dad, and I had them write out some tasks that he could proudly achieve himself. So, brush your hair. Mm -hmm. Pick his own clothes. That's marvellous. You're going to set up the clothes in his closet so that then he can just choose those, OK? Do you know what we'll do, Dominic? Mum is going to put all your clothes down there, and then you're going to pick an outfit, get yourself dressed into it, OK, and show us how well you do. Ready? One, two, three, go! The one you picked, OK. Then which shirt do you want? Like button the down. one button down. Okay. Dominic was very excited about getting dressed. He successfully oh. buttoned his pants and got himself dressed. That's it. Look at you. I'm a big boy. Woohoo! I hope that this board will be a constant reminder to Mum and Dad that Dominic is capable of doing much for himself. You got dressed. And so that they won't baby him as much. Yesterday, I taught mum and dad how to do a proper time out. Today, I'm going to get rid of all the unhealthy food that mum and dad have been enticing their children to behave better with. I want to take away the bribes. I want to take away all the stuff that basically you've been giving these kids so that they do listen. So you know what I'm talking about here, of right? Uh, I'm talking know, about that cupboard there. I'm not sure if it'll all fit <laughs> in that bag, but. Uh, well, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. You can help me then. Absolutely. All right. Right. When Joe came in with her bag, I, I was pretty excited just because we're all fixated on food and we have to straighten this out. I just dumped the whole thing in there. Put it all in. Dad was very willing to help out, and Dominic was watching from afar, and all of a sudden he got very upset about it. Hold on. Sylvia, Sylvia, can you help me with Dominic? Sil we don't use those for bribes. Sylvia, Dominic's upset. They got all no, they don't use them. Dominic? 
not happy, obviously, so let me just... Not. I get the wall again! This is an emotional... I know, Dominic. Are you going to explain to him I'm why... I'm going to. I don't want him to... I know, Dominic. Come, come with me. Give him the truth. We're taking this away because... Give him the real reason why, OK? It's because it was used in the wrong way. I know that you like candy. I like candy, too. Well, where are they taking them? They Sylvia. are put it in a big hiding place. Sylvia! Just be honest. I am being You're honest. You're not. Take accountability for it. Let Dominic well, know I'm... why. Be honest with him. So I just want to let him down easy and not have him flip Please. out. Be honest with him because you're about to do things that are going to make things better. The only reason why he's upset but is I'm... because you created this. I Yes, I agree with you. I'm not disagreeing well, so with you. You're but... sitting there stalling about a conversation. I'm not being stalling serious. about it. I'm trying you to are. talk to him. No, you're not. Stop fighting me and listen to what I'm saying. OK, and right now, in your mind, you want to sit here and, and moddy coddle how he's Absolutely. feeling emotionally. And I'm saying don't. I felt like Mum wasn't really addressing the situation. I felt like she was pacifying Dominic and myself and Michael were the bad cops because we were taking away the candy. The way that it's being dealt with, you're making a mountain out of a no, molehill and it's not him, fair for him. I don't want him to feel attacked, so I just want him to calm. Let me he's calm. not going to be feeling attacked if we just deal with it. So that's why I'm giving him an opportunity to calm also. Sylvia is making this into a far bigger deal than necessary. I know she gets it. She's just not doing it. Sylvia. Would you like to come? Sylvia, come with me right now. No. Sylvia. Yes. No. Mum was still babying Dominic. Well, I just want to let him down easy and not have him flip out. Be honest with him because you're about to do things that are going to make things better. And I knew she wasn't going to change her attitude. Sylvia, come with me right now. Yes. And at that point, I knew that I was going to have to get real tough with her. Yes. If you sit there and try and soften the blow for him, all right, you're making it seem like this is something that it shouldn't be. I'm here to help you, and I'm here to help your family. Now, you're either going to let me in I... and allow me to do it, or you're going to send me home. No, I'm asking for your help. Then receive it. I was embarrassed that Joe called me out. She's like a, a judge, jury, and an executioner all put together. Are you going to let me in, or are you going to ask me to leave? No, please. OK, after you, then. This is not personal. I'm here to do a job. And at that moment, I think she realised that I was here to make sure that the job was done. If you're confident about what you're saying, OK, then what happens is Dominic goes, Oh, OK. Well, Mum obviously knows what's right, and she's doing this because she's trying to make things better, so I'll follow Mummy's lead, OK? All right, come on, get in there. Let's do it. Let's do it. Come on, let's do it. <laughs> Dominic let's do it. is five years old, and Mum needs to start talking to him as such. I just want to tell you that Mommy was wrong to give you guys too many sweets and candy. Well, I know I use sweets to make you listen to me, but now we're going to try other ways, OK? Give me five. All right. It was brief, it was to the point, it was perfect. Message hit home, no more drama. Even though the candy has been removed from the house, what I want to do is put a system in place that allows these kids to have their healthy daily snacks. Three jars for three young boys. And the reason why we have these jars we put our snacks in our own jar. Then we're not going into the fridge or into the pantry, the cupboards, to eat the food that's in there, but we go to our own jar. I like the snack jars. In between breakfast and lunch, it's good for us to have a snack because otherwise it would be too long for us to have breakfast and wait for lunchtime and we start to get hungry. And then between lunchtime after lunchtime and dinner time, we have another snack. What we're setting up here is to make sure that the kids are not grazing throughout the day and that they are eating healthy snacks. What I want you to be very conscious of is that they should be eating their fruits and their vegetables daily anyway. OK, you guys, come over here and pick. Which one, Minnie? Which one? Mama, I get this one. OK. I get two. And on fruit. 
perfect. You did a good job, Dominic. In the kitchen basically had free reins of the cupboard, refrigerator, especially Dominic. Now that we have these jars, I think it gives us both a peace of mind knowing that he's at least in the path to having a more healthy lifestyle and eating better and not snacking all the time. There is no evening routine. Rather selfishly, Mum and Dad have been going off to the gym instead of realising the importance of these children getting the required sleep that is needed. And this has got to change. Typically, what you would do is go off to the gym in the evening. Yeah. It means you get back incredibly late, which really doesn't serve these kids well of getting their rest, their growth, development. So I brought in a board and helped Michael and Sylvia set out an evening routine. So what time do we want them in bed? Lights out. 8 o'clock. No, really? Quite frankly, Mum and Dad can go to the gym during the week in the morning or on the weekends. What's most important is that they all come together as a family on weeknights. And I also want to make sure that I allocate some good time for spending time with Dad. I have... Fishies. Fishies. In a bowl. So next, I introduced a very fun way of being able to get Dad and the boys active in the evening. You're going to use your imagination and the help of your little fellow men here to write down some creative ideas of what you can do for when you come home so they can then fish for those ideas. Let's put on this one race cars, OK? Race cars. Race cars, OK. Let's put that in the fish bowl. What idea do you want? Bowling. Bowling? How about campfire? Campfire! We roast marshmallows. Pretend, right? Yes. Once all the fishes were in the bowl, there was just enough time to play one quick game before bedtime. So now I think what we're going to do is we're going to go fishing. Green. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I like playing a fish bowl. Wow, campfire uh, for Vinny. Let's light a fire, OK? We have to get some sticks. Use the space of your house, all right? Just spark their imagination. All right, guys, come on. Whoa, come on, let's get some berries. Come on, come with me, Michael. Oh, look, there they are, over there. Right there, go get them. They're over there, grab them. I got the lighter, OK? It's hot. Don't touch it, though. It's hot. No, Vincent, don't touch it. It's hot. All right, let's toast the marshmallows up, OK? I think the children were really surprised by how much fun we could have with imagination and being by this artificial fire. The kids really got into it. Come on, Vincent. Oh, no. Run from the bears. I think Dad's off to an excellent start, and he just needs to honor that playtime so that he can bond with the boys because they've so been missing Run, them. run. <laughs> Michael and Sylvia, I'm going to leave for several days. Homework, snack jars. Evening routine, dad quality time. Tell me why that's important. For me to bond with my boys. Out in public without the candy. Come on. Listen. I'm worried that Sylvia may not have the time and patience to really follow through with discipline. Michael? Thank you. Okay, quality time, okay? Quality Absolutely. time. Working with the Federicos has been tough, I can tell you that much. And leaving for several days, I just don't know what I'm going to see when I get back. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. I just hope that mum and dad stick with what they've been taught. Because I tell you, if they don't, I'm coming back to a right mess. When I first started working with the Federicos, I was absolutely shocked with the way that they were baby and their five-year-old. Finish your peas. Yes. And then on top of it all, bribing their kids to behave. Michael, Mama, come with me. Look, Listen, if I no, give you yeah, a piece no. of candy, will you come with me? Now that I've been gone for a few days, it's just fingers crossed that mum and dad haven't gone back to their old ways. How confident are we feeling watching this? I feel OK. I hope that we're going to be happy with what we see, and hopefully Joe will be happy with us. Let's take a look at Dominic's achievement, all right? OK. Wow. <laughs> what a nice job. Home with the way Mama does it. Brush. Look, you brushed your hair right here. And you just brushed your teeth. Brushed my teeth. And you oh, also just got dressed. Give me five. You're a good boy. OK, so it is fantastic to see him actually doing more for himself. Well, he's, he's picked up the ball. I mean, he, he takes the initiative. I'm really pleased that he is doing that because we're just going to see more and more from Dominic, which is really promising. Let's move on to out in public. Hey, you guys are doing a good job by holding Papa's hand. You guys are being so good, we get to look around today. You see guys if switch. you guys are going to listen to me. All right, you guys going to hold my hand? Yay. Yay. 
You guys are holding mama's hand and everything. Get your shoe back there. Here. Here you go. Stay here, Michael. Hey, what happened with the escape? You were lucky there, obviously, that um, you know there was no traffic. But the reality is, is that when that happened, what you should have done is actually just straight away spoke to him about that, so that it's fresh in his mind and he knows that when you say stay, that he's to literally do that. What I did notice, which was lovely, is that actually you swapped around with the kids, so you worked really well as a team there. And there was lots of praise, Sylvia, which we need in abundance. So I'm really happy to see that because that really made a difference with the boys. Okay, so let's move on to quality time. You guys want to do fishing? Look, I got something. Bowling, it says. Bowling! Here. Wow. Hey, you got eight. Yes. Bowling. Pause it. Oh, whoa. How many did you get? Seven? I got it. No, oh, you did it. You got three of them. Oh, oh, no, no, Vincent knocked them. Oh, no, they all got knocked over. We got to set them up again. <laughs> I have to say, Michael, I look at the kids and their faces speak a thousand words. So I hope you're actually very proud of what you've achieved there. And everybody benefits from that, everybody. Seems to be working out. Yeah, they like the fish bowl. <laughs> they talk about it all day. Yeah. All right, let's move on to snacks. I think it's time for a snack. So look in your jar, see what you picked out, and take it. That's your snack. Lovely. Sneak one? No. I hope not. Oh, my goodness. We already know going in that actually Dominic is sneaky with food. And what we don't want is that habit to increase. We want it actually to go. So we've got to take it as read that if our backs are turned, that we know he's going to try and sneak food. We stop that by being able to recognise that it's a given he'll do that. So turn around in the beginning and say, you know, no taking out of the bowl, but what I'll do is, you know, I'll leave you the spoon afterwards. But you just make sure that it's minimum, you know? Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay, mum discipline. You need to put your dinosaurs away or I'm putting you in timeout and that's it. No, don't. Ow. Then put your dinosaurs away. Do you see what happened there? Yes. Is you talking to his eyes or the back of his head? Right. As soon as he goes to walk away, you're like back here. Drop it. Okay, thank you for telling me that Michael is not putting away the dinosaurs. Thank you. Stay in the timeout, please. No. Thank you. Yes. No. No. You need to listen to me. And that's it. Not no. I don't want to either, but you're not listening to me. Get back in there. You need to stand here. I'm starting. Yeah, sorry. You got a timeout because you didn't listen to me. Say sorry. Sorry, Mama. For not listening. No. And not helping. No. Give me a key. That wasn't a correct timeout, was it? Probably not. He said, I don't want to do timeout. And you said, I don't want to either, right? No, you do want to. Okay. You do want to do it because he didn't listen to you. You made your own rules up. If we don't get the discipline right and we don't get those steps underneath your belt, you'll end up back in square one by the time I've even left this door. So, not through the woods yet, but certainly on our way, right? Mm -hmm. Certainly on our way. Mum's discipline is still a little bit on shaky ground. And while, let's face it, Dad really hasn't done it because he's been at work. A refresher? Mm, I think that's needed. So, I have here a quiz for Mum and Dad. So, I'm going to ask you guys to come into the next room because I want to see exactly how much you've learnt whilst I've been here. We are going to start with discipline. What are the steps of time out? One, warning with the explanation and eye contact. Two, the timeout. Three, the explanation again after why he's been in a timeout, and then hugs and kisses. 
OK, this one goes across to Sylvia. How many warnings do you give before you put your child in timeout? Sylvia. One. Yes. <laughs> OK. It was fun playing around a game show with my husband. I knew most of the stuff. How many times a day do you fill the snack jars? Once. Once, correct, Michael. When are snack times? Sylvia. 10 and 3. Well done. All right, we are having a tie here at present. And the last question, what is more important to your children? Toys or your time? Michael. Our time. OK. And we have a winner here, Michael Federico. The quiz was a lot of fun, and it did demonstrate that actually mum and dad have learned a lot. They just need to follow through. One of the biggest achievements that the Federicos have tackled has been their relationship with food. And we really just need to keep this family on that path by making sure that the kids have very active lifestyles. What I've done is given you some examples that allow us to be active with our kids so that they can be very physical and they can be out there moving. When Joe brought in the activity clock, that's when I kind of realized that we're being a little selfish with the kids because we went and worked out all the time, but then we might not have done as much with them. And as you can see, jungle gym, just going to the park, soccer, swimming, ice skating, pick up sticks, riding bikes, hula hoop, and hopscotch and tennis, OK? So use these as examples. And what I thought we'd do is pick up sticks. OK, they're going to have to go to the furthest I want to put stick. Them down. Hang on. No, stop, no, stop, no, stop. No. You put one down right there, please. But as Mum was trying to get the game on the way, Michael was becoming disruptive. Michael, you need to give me those sticks. Drop a warning. I, I am giving you a warning. You I contact, to... I contact Sylvia. Michael, you need to look at me. You need to listen to me or and look at me because you're going to go in a timeout right now. Did you hear me? You need to listen and be good. Thank you. All right, nice. All right, stand up. OK, well done, Sylvia. OK. I was really impressed because Mum's tone was perfect. For the first time, she gave a proper warning. Ready? Go! very fun to watch the boys race and do the pick-up sticks activity. Yay, Dominic won! That's awesome! Woo! I'm off now. I'm going home. She's leaving. I'm going home. Can I give you a hug and say goodbye? Mwah. Bye, Jojo. Do you know what? I'm really proud of that can-do, that can-do list. Thanks, Jojo. You're great. Let me give you a kiss, you. Let me give you a kiss. Seeing Joe leave was bittersweet. Take care. Remember, don't sabotage nothing, OK? Thank you. Work Thank on you. it, all right? You deserve that. I feel like I've been liberated and the burden's been lifted. Very grateful to Joe, and, and uh, I'm glad she was part of our lives and just basically made us a complete family. Take care of your family. Thank you. Thank you.